take a girl and a guy, and they fall madly in love and form a family. Sprinkle in some counseling degrees and a doctorate, a dream of transforming relationships as we know it. And 20 years later, we give you power couple Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. And this is their podcast, Couples Synergy. Welcome back to another episode of Couples Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean. I'm Dr. Ray. And I'm Jean. And this is our podcast about love, marriage, and relationships. Be sure to check us out online on our Facebook page and Instagram at Couple Synergy or our website, couplesynergy.com. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast or send us any suggestions on topics you'd like to hear more about. And now on to Couple Synergy, an in-depth look at love, marriage, and relationships, where we bring you our experience helping thousands of couples transform their relationships for nearly 20 years. Everyone says you need to work on a relationship, but nobody teaches us how. So we've created this podcast to teach people what they can do to create the relationship they've always dreamed of with the partner they fell in love with. In today's episode, in preparation for Valentine's Day, which is coming up. And our 22. And our 22nd wedding anniversary on Valentine's Day. We are going to be talking about date night, right? There's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, First off, we are doing a 22 date night challenge for couples. Yep. And that starts on Valentine's Day. It goes until August 14th. So it's a six month period of time where couples are challenged to go on 22 date nights. Yeah. And you can find out more information about that by going on our Facebook page. And we'll have a list to choose from probably... About 30 will be up right away, and then throughout the six months, we'll be adding other date night ideas. Some of those date nights are totally free. Some of them, most of them, are under $60, $70, and there's some higher-end ones. Just a lot of great, fun ideas mm-hmm. for couples to yep. spend time together and to do new things. For each date that a couple goes on, it counts as an entry into our raffle for some prizes. Mm-hmm. A lot of businesses that uh, we're featuring on our date nights, which are some of Ray and I's favorite dates, um, are donating some things as well as the grand prize, which is an ultimate date night. So stay tuned on our Facebook page. There's an event page for this uh, where we will be updating all the different date ideas and the whole contest as it goes on. How can they find us? Couple Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean. And then it's an event on our Facebook page. Correct. Right. You could just look uh, up at Couple Synergy on Facebook and you'll be able to find our page. Awesome. So what we're going to talk about today is the mm-hmm. do's and don'ts of a great date night. The do's and don'ts. Because I think a lot of couples, they have this connotation about date night, you know, and that is just to go out with your partner and a lot of people they they join up with other people Mm -hmm. and you know now they're they're having this this date night with friends and everything so we wanted to go over the do's and don'ts because you know we kind of see it a little bit differently Um, so some of the do's one of the things we preached is doing new things yeah if you think about your relationship like a bank account and you've heard us say this before that the times that you spend apart or arguing or withdrawals and the times you spend having fun and doing new things and what we're calling a great date night, those are the deposits. These are the things that keep your relationship alive, that keep you feeling close and connected. And so this idea of doing new things. It, it should be an experience that both of you have not had mm-hmm. together before, like either one. Right. And so a lot of couples, they go to the same restaurant because that's their favorite restaurant. That's great. But part of our do's and don'ts is go to a a new restaurant. Take a risk. Yep. Take a risk. And it's preferable to do a new activity. And the reason for that is the neurons in your brain that fire together, wire together. And if you're learning something new and doing something new, then you will relate to each other differently and it brings that that uh, novelty back into your relationship. Think of it from this perspective. You constantly want to be evolving in your relationship. 
And so that means experiencing new things together. If you go to the same restaurant every single time, then you are also reliving past experiences of being at that restaurant or past discussions. And, you know, it doesn't help you actually, you know, grow beyond that box and, and evolve. No, then you're just doing a habit. And you do enough habits in your house, right? You sit in the same chair all the time, you get up on the same side of the bed, you do the same thing, you say hello and goodbye the same. And a great date night really is about changing it all up. And when you do that, you show up as a different person and you get to reinvent yourself and your relationship. Along the same lines, one of the other do's that we have is try activities versus something passive, right? Going out to dinner is fine, but couple that with doing something new, some type of activity that you guys have never done before. Bowling or there's, there's a new thing like axe throwing now. <laughs> that, you know, it's just something physical and something active that both of you can participate in. I think about some of the things that we just happened upon and how much fun that was. You know, like we, um, we went snowmobiling up north, north Wisconsin by Eagle River. And we kind of asked them, like, what do you guys do around here? And it just happened to be pond hockey weekend. And they had shoveled off this pond and it had like 40 different rinks. It was really cool. And it's not something we'd have had ever experienced. And so sometimes, you know, you just sort of happen upon things. And those are really great memories even if they're not things that are super exciting. Yeah, you know, the point here isn't to guarantee that it's going to be a great experience. Right. Right. And sometimes when you do new activities, it's just going to turn out horribly wrong. Which is some of the fun. <laughs> which, which is actually a lot of the fun. And the point in doing something new is that it brings out that feeling of risk. Right. We're risking trying something that we don't, we have any guarantee that it is going to turn out okay, right? And so it is in that that risk feeling that both of you are able to bond together. You know, I think one of the simplest ways to experience joy is through connection. Whether you're connecting uh, new neurons because you're learning something new or you're connecting as a couple, um, th those connections are release some really good feelings, all of that oxytocin to make you feel like connected and not so alone in the world. Yeah, in addition to trying new things and incorporating activities into your date, prepare yourself for the date. Make it something special. You know, try not to make this a, a really quick type of connection, you know, that you have the babysitter for only an hour and, you know, the two of you are just going to go out and, and get a quick bite to eat and, and then rush back home. That, that's not what we're talking about when it comes to date night. You know, it should be a process. Do you remember when you were first dating? When you were a teenager, when you were getting ready for a school dance or a first date, you'd spend hours, because of course you had hours back then, but you'd, you know, take a bath or um, get your hair done you know, really take a lot of time choosing what you're going to wear. And all of that prepares you and puts you in a different frame of mind. And I know a lot of you have kids and you're running around. Um, and maybe you can kind of take turns allowing the other person to have a little bit of time before the date if they're particularly stressed out. How did you prepare for dates when you first started dating? Oh, you, you know, you were mentally preparing yourself like all day, maybe even the night before. And then you were thinking about and considering what it is that you were going to wear. And, you know, if you didn't have something that you felt really good in, you went out to the store and, you, you know, you bought something specifically for that night. You know, it is all of that, that emotional and mental preparation that gets you in that frame of mind that you are going to make this person a priority. And when you think about that from that perspective, Shouldn't your partner, shouldn't your spouse, you know, shouldn't your significant other be a priority, at least just for one night, right? 
And in the beginning of your relationship, they were. They were a priority all the time. But obviously, life gets in the way. We have all of these obligations. We've got kids. We've got jobs and all of that. And, you know, it's we start to push our partner down on that priority list, let alone push ourselves down right. on that priority list. And so if you're making this a, a, a consistency in your lives together, you are making your relationship a priority. Another thing that I would highly suggest is a little treasure. You know, we typically, like if we're on vacation or something, we will kind of hunt down something that is a great memory for us to hold for that. And it doesn't have to be a big thing. Sometimes it might be... um, A little figurine or a little... You know, statue of some kind, or or maybe you know you get a bottle of wine, you know, from a restaurant that you guys went to together, or a winery, right? Something that is is going to sit there on your shelf and is going to remind you guys of your date night. You know, it is a memento, whatever that is, right? A memento that is going to keep that feeling moving forward in your relationship. And then every time you look at it, it reminds you of that great night that you had. Right. Another thing that's important while you're on your date is to share your hopes and dreams about the future with each other. In the beginning of your relationship, this was something that came very naturally, you know, to talk about, you know, where you'd see yourself in the future. Well, you would have to because you don't have a common past yet, right? So you're always future focused and you're always have this momentum going And then you get there and then I think you start looking back. And so staying connected to, you know, we're always constantly changing and evolving and growing and we don't take time to check in and get to know where our partner ended up and where they want to go. Maybe they've changed their mind. This is a very important piece about date night and that's learning about your partner. You are constantly evolving. You are not the same person yesterday as you are today. And so your partner is evolving as well. And you have to constantly be learning about each other. You know, they may have different opinions about things that they had in the past, you know, because we're constantly changing. And so if you're not connecting and if you're not learning and you're not understanding your partner and where they're coming from and what their point of view is, that creates distance in the relationship. You know, sometimes when one or both of you has a new idea that might seem a little contradictory to the way they that you felt or they felt years ago, that can be a little scary and intimidating. And you're kind of like, oh, you know, you've changed and I don't know, I don't know who you are. And I'd really recommend you sort of act like you're a reporter and interview your partner in as much depth as you can. Because what I found is, you know, Ray, whenever you have these new ideas or I have new ideas, they seem like we're in conflict, but the more we talk it through, the more we realize we're really saying kind of the same thing. We're just coming at it from a different place. And so, you know, you kind of have to relax into that because that can be a little vulnerable and really, really hear what your partner's trying to say before you take it too personally and understand like what, why is this thing important to them and what led them to this change? Yeah, it's very easy to take it personally and to see it as a threat. And, you know, it, especially if they have a differing opinion than they have had in the past. Um, and it can move you into judging your partner, you know, and criticizing them for their, their thoughts and opinions versus really understanding their perspective. You know, it's only through understanding where we can have compassion for our partner and that bonds us, you know, versus separating us. So along the same lines, when you are talking about your hopes, dreams, you know, about the future, you you have to have eye contact, right? You can't be looking all around the room. You have to be present. You have to look at your partner. You know, we're talking about making your priority, making your partner a priority for the night. And nothing says that you're not a priority then looking around the room and looking at other things and other people and not being fully present 
with that person right in front of you. I think about some times during our relationship where we might have been at something, right? Like out for dinner or whatever. And then ultimately we decide to kind of distance ourselves from other people, like go for a walk or um, find a quiet corner to talk in. And those conversations have had a lot of depth and growth for us. And so, you know, going out sometimes is overstimulating. There's so much stuff t- trying to grab your attention. So, you know, after you do that, maybe go to a quiet place and really dive into a real conversation. Yeah, along the same lines, try to find a place. If you're in a restaurant or, you know, in a bar and you're trying to have that conversation, try to find a place that is not surrounded by TVs. That's almost impossible. It it is. There's a lot of places that have TVs everywhere, every angle, but that is just a distraction. It's very easy to become distracted by, you know, this, this flashing screen and, you know, words that are coming up and breaking news and all of that stuff is all designed to grab your attention. And, and so it, it will take a little bit of effort, but find a, a more peaceful nook and cranny. Um, we, we love Irish pubs because Irish pubs are very mm-hmm. much like that. They're, yeah. they're built for that community, um, you know, community feel. feel. Mm-hmm. And, and so try to find a little, you know, private place that you can connect with your partner. And flirt. Mm-hmm. Flirting is really important. Remember when you were dating, you guys were flirting all the time. One of the date night suggestions is to go to a salt cave, which we did yesterday. And, you know, you kind of just go in there and hang out for an hour and it's quiet. And at one point, both of us weren't really relaxing anymore. And I just started looking at you. Like, I don't remember when we really looked into each other's eyes for long periods of time in a while, you know, and, you know, to just sit and look at each other for like five minutes. And we held hands. And we held hands. Right. Yep. And, you know, it's, the, it's all of that meta language that you, you know, communicate so much without words. Right. Lean into your partner, mm-hmm. lean into what they're saying, you know, look into their eyes. You know, feel those feelings that you had when you first met. Touch each other. Yes. And and just try to slough off the rest of the world. The rest of the world is going to be there after your date is end. (laughs) The bills are still going to be there. You know, the obligations are still going to be there. But we don't have to fill up our heads with all of that noise all the time. And if we get in this habit of carving out space for our relationship, that becomes the anchor point for our world and for our lives. And you think about that, if you are saying to your subconscious, you're saying to your partner, you're saying to the world and your family that my relationship is important enough for me to create an anchor point where it is honored consistently, well, that is what you are sending out to the world. And that is what you're going to create more of. Here's a good and an, and an important don't, and it's an important don't because it's so natural to go there. Don't talk about logistics. No. Don't talk about your work. Don't talk about your kids. Nope. Don't talk about the past. No problems either. Yep. No problems. This is fun time. This is not problem solving time. And one interesting way that you can prepare for that is if you each come up with three questions, three questions that have no right or wrong answer that just help you get to know your partner a little more. You know, like an idea of, you know, if if you could travel anywhere in the world, where would you want to go if money was no object? Just, you know, open-ended questions like that and try to think about them ahead of time because in the moment it'll be too much pressure. And, you know, you might even be thinking about them throughout the month if you have date night once a month or twice a month. And then you can bring that in. And those are good, you know, conversation starters to get you out of that rut. Yeah, these questions should be fun, Mm -hmm. right? If you could meet with someone famous in the world, whether living or dead, who would that be and why? Why would that be important to you, right? Um, What what is a, a regret that you have about, you know, 
doing something in your life? Like, is there something that you've wanted to experience that you never have? That's a really great question because I think if you told me something that you really wanted to experience or that was, I remember I actually, there was something you wanted as a little boy. It was like a toy. I love the show SWAT. Yeah. And I would watch that consistently. And they came out with a toy, like a toy SWAT uh, machine gun. Right where you pull the trigger, it's like take it, take it, take it, take it. <laughs> and I wanted that when I was a boy, and I never got it. I always wanted like some of my friends or someone to to get it for me for my birthday. I think I got it for you for like your forty third birthday, right? Or something. Right, you did. <laughs> and it means a lot. It yeah. really does because you know you, you don't you don't ever want to walk through life and collect regrets and collect resentments. And if your relationship gives you an opportunity to be able to experience the things that you wanted to, but never have, then isn't that the point, right? To help each other, meet each other's needs, and to create that future together. It is one of the most common reasons that 25 plus year relationships end, is they don't have that common vision and they haven't grown and sewn their lives together as well as they could have. And it sort of unravels once there's a big change, like all oh, the kids leave. These things are really the glue of your relationship. And I know a lot of people have a hard time leaving their kids to go on date night, but I can tell you this, that's the best thing you could do for your kids is make sure you're investing in, in your relationship with your partner. So along the same lines, don't bring your kids. Yeah. I think that goes without saying, but mm-hmm. I, how many times that we have to correct couples on this, right? They bring their kids along and, you know, the kids, they're, they're occupied. They're on their, you know, iPhones, iPads, and, you know, we're, we're spending time together talking. No, it's not the same thing. That is family time, mm-hmm. right? And and even from that perspective, that's not family time. Right, not if they're on their Right, you're not spending time with your kids. You're not interacting with them. So don't bring your kids. Couple time is couple time. Family time is family time. If you go on vacation with your family, this is family time. It's not a couple vacation, okay? So, and, and also, we, we mentioned it earlier, don't go out with friends. Right. That's not couple time. All right. That's not one on one interaction between you and your spouse or you and your partner. That's interacting with friends and that's friendship time. Okay. It's important, but it's not the same thing. You know, a lot of times now when you and I go out, we'll actually sit up at the bar on purpose because we do want to talk to the bartender or other people around us because, you know, our kids are gone and sometimes you and I will spend all day together without any company. And that's our intention. That's not what we're talking about. We're not no. talking about that. We're talking about sit at sit at a private table, you know, and certainly we do plenty of that as well. And stay present, stay focused, flirt, share at a level of depth. A, a lot of couples, when they first try to institute date nights and trying to reconnect with each other, they want to include the kids. They want to include other people. Because it's a little awkward. They haven't really spent much time with each other. And so in the back of their mind, they're worried that they're not going to have anything to talk about. And this is an issue. This is an awkward period, right? You're breaking through something that you haven't done before. It was awkward the first time you went on a date. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And you're, in essence, going on a new date with a different person because you've changed over the years and so have they. And, you know, the tendency of wanting to talk about the things that you guys are sharing your lives in is very, is very good, right? You're going to talk about the kids. You're going to talk about your work. You're going to talk about really what the majority of your relationship is. And so if you haven't been connecting on a one-on-one level, then, yeah, you are going to have awkward discussions you know, about those things. It's, it's like kind of get, getting to know a person again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, if you feel awkward and it feels a little discombobulated, that means you're doing it right. Push through it. Yep. Yeah. It, it's, it's Talk about it. Absolutely talk yeah. about it, how awkward it feels. Mm-hmm. 
you know, just, just put it all out on the table because you, you don't shift things by doing the same thing. Right. Be vulnerable. Uh, one of the really important don'ts here, and we've talked about this in multiple episodes, do not take your phone out. Put your phone away. This is time that you're interacting with each other and you have to make your relationship a priority. And if your phone is there and a a, uh, notification goes off, it will immediately shift that energy between the two of you. You know, the first thing people are going to say is, but my kids are home and what if they need me? And you know what? It's okay if they don't have 24-7 access to you. If there's a real emergency... You can give them the number of of the place that you're at. But when I was a kid, my parents would go out. There wasn't cell phones. I couldn't reach them. I had to wait. Sure. And, you know, you could just log out of all of your social media. You could log out of your email. So you're not going to get any of those notifications. And the only thing that you're going to get notification for is a phone call. Right. And so if that's the case and, you know, the babysitter's calling or the kids are calling and it's an emergency, then that's the only notification you're going to get. But the, the point here is removing all of those distractions and making that time with your partner the number one priority. And, you know, if your kids do call and it's not really an emergency, you really should train them to be able to do better at self soothing and delaying gratification because those are important skills that kids are losing these days. You could pretty much expect that they're going to call, especially if this is new for the two of you. You know, the kids are going to be, they're raising their eyebrows. They have no idea what's going on, right? And so it feels awkward for them as well. And so they are going to call you just because they have some, you know, subconscious anxiety and worry about it. So this is an opportunity to teach the kids something different also. You know, that mommy and daddy time are very important and we are going to start teaching you, you know, some appropriate boundaries around that. Because, you know, your kids are going to get to an age where they socialize and they're going to teach you the boundaries of don't interrupt me when I'm socializing. Right. (laughs) You know, while your phone, while the data is off on your phone, you can use your phone to take pictures so that you can reminisce about your date. And that brings back those good feelings again, too. You can leave it as your screensaver and, you know, maybe text those pictures to your partner periodically. And it keeps that energy going from that investment of great date night. Yeah. We have like a plethora of Aussies, (laughs) right. Where we take pictures. I mean, it, you know, for us, it is a way of remembering where we went and that we had a good time. And, you know, a lot of times we post it on, on Couple Synergy on Facebook page, but yep, for the most wanna, part... We want to role model it. Right, and for the most part, I mean, it's for us, you know, and th- it's just a, a fun thing to do. Mm-hmm. So we wanted to read off uh, a review that we just got. Um, Malali986, titled Very Informative Podcast. I would love for you to have open phones like Dr. Laura but understand if you're not ready for that yet. I always learn quite a bit from you. I'm interested in topics like emotional and mental abuse, manipulation, anger management, depression, how religious views can deter people who need divorce, narcissism, and in-law relations. What are the red flags for people who don't know how to spot any of this stuff? What is okay to learn to live with versus unacceptable? You know, we just met somebody from a local radio uh, station that suggested the same thing, that we do a live broadcast on a radio, and we are looking into that, and we will let you know when we're going to do that. And so you can save up those questions, and that will definitely be a call-in type of show. Yeah, we really appreciate the review, uh, first off. And, you know, these are some really great questions uh, for those out there who would like to ask us any questions that we can, you know, talk about on our, on our podcast, you can send it to contact at couple Um, in regards to your review, um, the red flags, we, we have an episode about red flags that, you know, people can spot in relationships. These are really, really bad warning signs. Um, and we want people to be able to recognize that in relationships. It, it does cover, a lot of the things that you're talking about, emotional, mental abuse, and manipulation. 
in addition to addiction, you know, and uh, physical abuse as well. So please, you know, make sure to check out the red flag episode. We have a few that we've recorded based on some suggestions you guys have had. So stay tuned. We have recorded somebody that struggled with addictions. We actually two couples that had addictions and in, we actually found co-parenting post-divorce couples. So they're both remarried and they're both rocking it as co-parents. And so stay tuned for those episodes. We also have two other episodes on yellow flags and blue flags in relationships. And so we see these three different categories uh, in relationships and, and dysfunctions within relationships. So check out those podcast episodes as well. And if it's after February 14th, then you can go to our website, couplesynergy.com, and there's actually a relationship assessment that help you see which category your relationship is in and some things that you can do about it. We want to wholeheartedly thank you for joining us today and for listening to Couples Synergy. Our passion is in helping couples have happy and healthy relationships. And this podcast gives us a fun way of bringing our knowledge and expertise to you, our listeners. We're really excited to hear about your date nights and stay tuned for the date night challenge. Again, that will also be up on Valentine's Day, February 14th at couplesynergy.com or follow us on Facebook and look for the event of the 22 date night challenge. And Gina and I will be celebrating our 22nd anniversary in Aruba. So we will be in Aruba on Valentine's Day. Be sure to check out some of the pictures that we're going to post <laughs> on our Facebook page as well. And if you know someone who could benefit from this episode, please download it and share it. And thank you for listening. For all you listening, please subscribe to our podcast and please leave us a review. If you have any questions, comments, or topic suggestions, again, please email us at contact at couplesynergy.com. For more information about Couple Synergy and our programs, such as Relationship 101, the Couples Weekend Intensive, and our premier program called Couple to Couple, look us up online at couplesynergy.com. Until next time, synergize your life and synergize your love. You have been listening to Couple Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Couple Synergy was recorded, edited, and produced by Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Voiceover and music entitled Breathe and Let Go was recorded and composed by Gina Gonzalez.